welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. One last thing, a sincere thank you to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do. There is now one new way which you can support me. I am on patreon.com backslash Eric Haugen Guitar. Now to the lesson. All right, we start with a D minor. Oh, by the way, I am in drop D tuning. So D minor, based out of that D minor shape, seven, six, five. And yet I'm using fingers, these three together. Which, yeah, fun thing to do. Um, so the, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Just to create some interest as it passes to the next chord, I let in an open E, which makes a D minor nine, and I bring in this fifth fret of the G string to make it a, oh, I guess, yeah, it's still technically a D minor nine. Just makes it a little wonky. G minor. So thinking of this G minor bar chord shape, but only getting five, three, and three. And yep, I will. Same thing, I bring in this A natural here, which makes it into a minor nine chord. But this time I do that on like beats three and four of the first bar of it, because I know that there's gonna be a weird bass thing coming in. And then a B flat, which you could do. Again, there's, there's a B flat. Now, that's just something I know I can do in this key is turn this B flat, which is, hold on, I know what it is. <laughs> it's seven, eight, seven, six. I can turn it into a major seven by doing eight, 10, 10. Nice sound. Um, flatten out to get eight, 10, eight. And then way down to an A7. You know, that's just O, two, O, two, which I might be here. And there's that little lead in, O, three, four, on our A string. And then, so we're on a big old D, zero, 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 three, sorry, two, three, Notice I'm doing it with these two fingers because I'm going to keep him free to get this walk down note. And I do, sometimes I'll use my nails as well as the pads. So I'll use both sides. Let's look at that. Let's watch this hand when I do that. Notice how I got that third fret note there. And then I'm going to do a similar thing to a G minor. Three and three on the G and B. Ring finger's gonna get that fifth fret there because that's our root, that's our G. There's a weird note in there that, that Mark Ronson put in on the bass. It's not really of the key, but sure is cool, an A flat. So yeah, you get your pinky out to get um, that, what is the sixth fret? Yeah, so I'm using all those, like a little little lobster claw. And then I'll get that same B-flat from before, but immediately jump it down to 3-3-3 three, three, three on the D, G, and B, which is, you know, there's B-flat, because there's the vocal melody coming at me. She's so cool. So that's two up to seven and back of the G. There's our A7 again. I'm going to move it up to an inversion of A7, so still A7, O, 5, 6, 5, and then one more inversion of A7, 0, 11, 9, 8. And then I was like, well, since I'm up here, oh wait, I just started to take like a little solo, a, a somewhat Mark Rabot inspired solo. 
Uh, so there I am. The song's in D minor, so, yep, I'm thinking of, you know, a D, D blues scale here. 10, 13. And then this is my Mark Rabot, which he really got from West Montgomery Lick. I use it all the time. <laughs> I love that thing. So you're going to slide into that 12th fret, which is the ninth of the chord. Do a pull-off from 13 to 10, which is the 7th to the 5th, and roll over to that 10 on the G, which is the 3rd of the chord, to that 9th of the chord, again, which happens to be, hey, the 9th fret. One of the best licks, if you don't know it already, know it and use it all the time like I do. I love that thing. I land it one lower there on seven of the G string. And then I get 10 and 10, because now I'm on, I know I'm on a G minor, so I'm kind of thinking. And I thought it would be neat to do 10 and 10, and then 8 and 10. There's my G, you know. And then I do a similar, kind of similar, kind of different, because that's G minor, this is G minor, this is G minor. I'm kind of thinking of third to the ninth, to the seventh, to the fifth, which is kind of one of those like throwing another triad at that triad. So what I do there is, that's really a D minor triad. I'm kind of throwing at it. Six, five, six, seven. And, uh, yeah, because I think that gets us to the, I think that's on the B flat at this point. That is on an eight, mm -hmm. six, five, six. Wait, I got, hold on, I got to think about it again. Oh, that's what I do, sorry. I get to that eight, but then five, six. Yeah, that's what I do. There's my B flat, you know, my B flat's here. So I'm seeing this six here. And then a little quick trill of five and three. Still on a B flat. So I, I know that I can get away with this because there's a B flat. That's the ninth of the B flat. There's the root in the major seven. Five, three, two, three. So that little line, uh, where am I? an A, so I stay there. And I kind of, yeah, use my thumb. And I walk down a minor scale. A D minor scale, specifically. Songs in D minor. Two, O, oh, change strings. Three, two. Here's the cool part. So let's look at that. You get your thumb going. Up top, you got seven and six, which is like, you know, her melody is. That's what she's doing. So my way to cop that, those two are together. I'm going to use the open E as, as that melody note. Counterintuitive, but it works. That eight there with the pinky. That's what's going on up top. Watch these fingers there. That's the first thing to practice. And then you bring in Thumbzilla. And then the chord's going to change to that G minor. So I know that I can get that G down here. But up top, still doing the same thing. Here's our B flat, you know, because of our drop D tuning. That's our eighth fret. Still the same thing up top. Gnarly. And then, so then I'm kind of taking the melody and harmonizing it. 11 and 10, that's an A. And I hit an A root with the thumb. A, well, I guess. Let's not worry about it. We'll call that still an A of sorts. It's like a sus four flat nine. Uh, that is seven, eight, seven. Then back it up to seven and six. 
two, and five, because the, the melody is. So what I'm doing is harmonizing it a third below the melody, cause nerd. Cool nerd though. And then I do the same thing an octave higher. So there's again, here's our A. You know, there's an A7 chord. 12, 14. There's that 4 and flat 9, which is 10 and 11. Back it up one fret. And then I know that I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna tie this up in a little bow and kind of get out of here for the day because there's like a bridge of the song that has a slightly different structure. I'm gonna hit that five and five there. And then, yeah, I'm gonna let that upper E ring out. Again, hybrid picky. Three, one, three. That's the D minor, and then I'm gonna go to the G. So again, I'm back to that G minor structure. I'm gonna use my pinky. Then, the song has an F chord. Here's a caged F structure, so I'm playing out of that. Seven on the D, five on the G. And I walk out of it. Five, eight, and then an A7 again. Yep, O to O, and I'm gonna play with that middle note. And then, seven, three, O. There you go. I don't have too much to say about this arrangement other than like, what an awesome song, what great production, what a loss that she is no longer with us. Um, from a technical standpoint on this song, there's definitely some thumb, finger, independent stuff that, that merits a good amount of practice. There's also some tasty kind of arpeggiated, triad substitution things in that kind of solo verse that I took. Um, I think those are the main two things if I'm thinking about this arrangement that I think are neat and haugentastic. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Have fun with that.